Most of you by now know that I work at VIP Mortgage. A lot of you may not know why or how I got there. For us as LOs, we have a lot of options. And for me, VIP Mortgage is the place for the best place, in my opinion, to work. So if you have any questions about VIP Mortgage as an LO, or if you are a consumer and you for a mortgage, you can reach out to me on social media, or you can reach out to anybody else that you may know about VIP Mortgage. And our website is VIP. Welcome, everybody, to our next episode of Real Talk with Ryan Madrid. First of all, I'd like to thank my sister, Ryan, <laughs> Trisha Madrid. She produces the show for us and helps us with social media. So I'm going to do both those, Trish. And uh, my nephew slash godson back there, Trey Maroff. He is doing the, the podcast engineering. Always killing it. Always killing it. So he's our gifted child. <laughs> um, so today is a very cool episode because we got somebody on that... Uh, Got that started his own business recently. That uh, I think that he took the leap of faith when everybody's kind of wanting to do, but <laughs> Ryan actually did it. So I got Ryan Banavac here from Navi Title, and thank, uh, you, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So we talked a little bit about just the fact that my sister and my nephew are here, and yeah. so yeah, right away I'm going to mention family. the fact that Ryan has a family affair with his mom and his sister. <laughs> Sorry to say <laughs> that are referred to Linda and Tanya. Linda yes. and Tanya. Yeah. So. And you forgot that actually my aunt too. Oh, your aunt too. Yeah. Karen. Okay. Jeez. I didn't know that. Yeah. And what does she do? She escrow officer. A, she's an escrow officer too. Mm -hmm. God, you keep it in the family. Absolutely. All right. So let's just get back, I would like go back in time a little bit because I want to explain the fact before we get into the whole Navi just kind of how you got in this business because the fact that your family is in the business and, but we don't need to go all the way back to high school and all that stuff. But out of college, did you go right into this business? Like, like your family or did you try something different? Cause you're like, I don't, I'm not doing what everybody else is doing. Madrid. When I was born, you know, I went to high school, college to train, to be an escrow. Okay. I knew no. it. <laughs> I knew no, it. you come on. Everybody that lands in title and escrow have no idea it exists. So when growing up, when people would ask me what my, mo my mother did, it was, I always thought she was a lawyer because she worked at lawyer's title. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, even yeah. through college, I had no idea. Right. So even when people are closing transactions, like you tell them, you know, title and escrow, nobody has a clue what that is. Right. Uh, so go back, kind of fast forward through college, graduated in, uh, I think it was 02, 03. I think it took five years to graduate. I didn't want to finish that last year because I was having too much fun. Uh, but I was in Riverside, California, and I was managing valet at a hotel called Mission Inn. And I thought that was going to be my career path. It was going to be hospitality. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I like this. I like people. I like cars. I like just dealing with the whole hospitality industry. So I get a phone call from my mother that said, hey, my salesperson actually just got promoted to sales manager. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? Uh, she goes, well, there's a job position opening up to be my sales, my sales exec, uh, but I need you here in December. And this was November. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, how much money am I going to make? Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'll guarantee you a hundred thousand the first year. And at 23 <laughs> years old, I was like, uh, Sign me up. You just opened up a whole <laughs> book of a can of worms right now. The people about people going, how much? Wait, how much money do people make a title? Yeah, obviously. I mean, it was <laughs> that was twenty years ago. It, yeah, twenty years. That was 15, 16, 17, whatever it was. But uh, no, so she kind of told me it as a joke, okay. just to kind of get me to go back home. And so when I called her back up and I said, "Hey, about that job, uh, I want that. I'll move back home." And so I did the interview with a gentleman named Howard Weiner, which the family knew very well. And so I had a little inside track to get on. There wasn't much of an interview process. It's always who you know. Yeah. Um, gave me a shot. And so I moved back out to Arizona in 2005, in December. Okay. Actually, it was December 2004, came back out here and started January 2005 in the heyday of real estate. That's why she guaranteed $100,000 a year. Right. 
So at what point did you find out actually what title Nestro was? Uh, it's still a funny story. So I show up the first day. Uh, it was January 20th of 2005. I go to her office. I sit down. And I sit there. I'm like, okay, what do I do? She's like, pick up that phone and start calling realtors. And I was like, oh, and, and do what? Like, <laughs> right. yeah. like yeah. I don't even know what you guys do on that yeah. side. I don't even know what, like, what your job entails. Like, mm-hmm. what do I tell these people? She's like, well, just tell them you want to meet them. And you want them to start using lawyer's title for title. Yeah. And I was like, okay, but, the, but why are they going to do that? Mm-hmm. So it took me weeks, months, and months. And the person I replaced used to teach at the School of Real Estate and taught a 45-minute class on title and escrow. And I had to take that over. And I didn't know what title and escrow was. Right. So, yes, I did. So I recorded it six times. <laughs> I went to her class six times. I recorded the whole thing, and it was for new licensees. And so I was, believe it or not, I was always afraid to be talking in front of people. So I was always scared to do that. It always just, Everybody is, though, I think, uh, at some point. Yeah, so it's not that rare. But I, I know that's not your personality now. But. No, no. And so I had, believe it or not, I went to Circle K beforehand. Do you remember the drinks that were Sparks? That orange Sparks alcoholic drink like 15, 20 years ago? Sparks, no. No. Yeah. So it was in a can. And it was like orange. But I would down one of those. It was like a Four Loco type eh. of thing? <laughs> well, before Four Loco was Four Loco, yes, <laughs> yeah, probably. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I, I would down one of those and to calm my nerves. Yeah. And then I would just go talk to these people that I had no idea what I was talking about. Right. And pretty much make up stuff about title and escrow. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Drinking before you speak still works. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that was the first six months just figuring out what yeah. the hell was going on. Let me just back up. I have one quick question for yeah. you. So I know you went to St. Mary's, but like, was it a big leap of faith for you to leave Arizona to go? go you went to play golf, right? I played golf. Okay, yeah. so to where to go out of state? No, it was actually a blessing. So in high school, like, I was always kind of the quiet kid, not a lot of friends, just kind of kid in the corner. And so I wanted to do it to start a new life. Okay. So it was good for me. It was either going to be Cal Baptist is where I went to play, play golf in college, or it was going to be uh, USD. I couldn't get a scholarship at USD. I got one at Cal Baptist, so I went there. Nice. It's totally life-changing on your own. Yeah, I think that that's awesome that, that you get the opportunity to go out. It's just you don't find that many people that, that do it. Yeah. You know, unless you may have gone to St. Mary's, I guess back then, you know, <laughs> well, we talk about this all the time. It's like you, if you see Xavier Brophy, yeah, like maybe yeah. Notre Dame, like there's just maybe it's just like kind of where you grow up, the lens you look through a little bit differently. And so kids want to maybe have the opportunity to go to other places. But just a lot of kids I grew up with did not go places outside of Arizona. Yeah. yeah. But I think that giving the opportunity is a cool thing. But no, it was cool. I mean, <clears throat> uh, free education. That was the bonus. Yeah. Um, also starting a whole new life. I mean, I was scared. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I mean, I was a scared child. I mean, I was quiet. So going and leaving Arizona, I'm not going to lie. I was, it was fearful. Yeah. But I got over it the first week and I thought that was going to be, I was going to be a California resident the rest of my life. I'm glad I came back. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So you came back and you were working with lawyers for a long time. 16 years. 16 years. Mm-hmm. And, and you were having tons of success. You mm-hmm. obviously kept kind of going up the ladder and, and uh, you and Anthony were the same kind of same role. Absolutely. Just, you know, kind of, and you ran as a team pretty much, mm-hmm. which was cool. You was a super unique deal and you guys obviously murdered it. So Thank you. when you're at that point, like, you're like, okay, I'm seeing the revenue side of things. I understand the business yeah. a little bit more because a lot for a long time, I think in any in real estate and in, in mortgages and title, not you don't really understand the numbers that really as clearly as maybe you should because Correct. it's not your job to your job is to to, to get business, get your drive commission. business, just bring business yeah. in, bring it in, bring it in. And the yeah. more I bring in, the more I make. Exactly. Yeah. So at what point did you start going, okay, wait a second, there's a big piece of pie of the pie that I'm, that I'm leaving out here. Yeah. And it's not, <clears throat> and, I, and it's not even about the big piece of pie I was, I was missing. I mean, when Anthony and I took over the team about seven years ago at lawyers, I mean, lawyers title was, was great to me for 16 years. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I built myself through the company. They were good to me. I just knew there was a ceiling there unless I took over the actual operation locally or went out of state. Mm-hmm. And there was a time, you know, about two years ago that I knew there was not going to be a spot opened up 
in Arizona to run the operation. Yeah. And so that's when I started venturing out, looking into other things. So, I mean, it was, it's interesting because being in the corporate world, I've never been on the small company aspect of it. I've never seen it. I have never ran a title company, Yeah. but I know a lot of people who have. Yeah. And so the fear factor, I mean, holy cow. I mean, it was, I mean, I'm not going to lie. We were well taken care of and to jump and ship from something that was comfortable and something that provided a good life yep. and where Anthony and I provided something that, I mean, we, we were killing that lawyer's title. We became number two market share on purchase. So when we first started, we were number eight, we drove it to number two and the connections I had, it was a leap of faith. Yeah. But I knew just the people that are kind of in my circle, I knew it wouldn't fail. Right. So it, it was, it was hard. It yeah. was hard. Well, you guys had such a good, good relationship going. I mean, your build, your business was built very similar to mine. It's like it was, it's built on your friendships and your relationships, relationships. right? And uh -huh. you and you have strong, like true friendships with like really successful partners. Yep. And that would follow you probably into anything right so mm -hmm. but you still had to go get asked that question and, tell, and let them know what you're doing because you had to make sure this is going to go down this way or at least hope for so did you go through that was, was your approach you'd have like individual meetings with these all these guys and be like listen this is what i'm thinking about doing like if i do this or i mean you always got to be careful during those i mean it's yeah. i mean legal reasons etc you really can't promote where you're going to do what you're going to go where you're going to go it was always a conversation. It was individual that, hey, if I ever down the road, we're going to start my own title company. Yeah. What would you think of that? Would you follow? Right. So it was never, I'm going to do this on X date. It was, if I did this, right. what does that look like? I get it. Yeah. And so every answer, I'm, I'm all on board with you, man. All on board. And it's, when you talk about the relationships, I mean, it's key. I mean, the, the relationships I've built the last 15 years, I mean, it's part of my personal life too. I mean, totally. I, I mean, I care about their success more than mine sometimes. And that's, and people see that. Yeah. I mean, it's genuine. I really For care sure. about people succeeding in every aspect. Right. Now you guys have a, a very cool, I mean, those same people are your, your, your friendships of like who you vacation with and you go, you know, you, it's crazy. It you is. spend your Fridays yeah. and Saturday nights, you yeah. know, how did you two become friends? This is wow. actually a really good story. Let me hear it. Eric Kilstrom. Yeah. Actually. I just got in the business and I was trying to f find my way around. He was at home smart and he suggested that you and I meet and you had just hired Chris Medina. Like it was like the, the, like, it was like one of his first days wow. and me, you, Eric and nine, Chris nine, ago, yeah. went to PF Chang's That's on right. 83rd Avenue That's right. in Bell road uh -huh. and had lunch. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the first time we went, but, 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 but Kilstrom actually did that to pass me off to you. He no. didn't, didn't want to deal with me anymore. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> there's always an angle with Eric. <laughs> but, uh, it's, but we quickly were running in the same. We were always, I don't even know, like, what. That era was just, like, we were out all the time all the doing time. stuff. I don't even know if that still happens. But, like, there was just a lot of events always happening. And you guys were building your business the same time I was building my business. So we were always at the same events. And then we became just buddies. And then we ended up having some of the same accounts. So yep. we'd see each other at the same things. And then people used to say we looked like each other. <laughs> You're definitely the better looking guy. Man. <laughs> I'm the shorter one. <laughs> um, so let me just go back into the personal side of things a yeah. little bit. What did your wife say? Or, like, how was she during this process? And, and It's a good question. It's, it's tough. I mean... Obviously, being my, my life partner, I mean, she was always had my back, uh, but fearful still. Yeah. I mean, I was, I'm the sole provider of the family, two children, uh, seven and four. Um, and it was one of those things where she sat down, she asked me, she's like, is this, are, are, are you going to go for it? And will it be successful? Those yeah. were the only things she asked. And I said, yes and yes. And she's had my back every day since. And she's my biggest cheerleader. For sure. Uh, That's how I found out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. It's yeah. because of her. Yeah, she's, uh, she in the background does a lot of my marketing now, um, all the swag, all that kind of stuff. So she's highly invested in a lot of my relationships too. Mm -hmm. And so she's just invested all around me. And yeah. I, I love that about it. You guys have a cool life. <laughs> you do. 
it's it's a cool i mean you, you guys have a good great marriage obviously cool obviously your your family dynamics awesome but you guys share the same friends i mean your friends yes. from this from that's in the industry are her friends too yes so yeah. it's very easy for you guys to do things and keep these relationships strong because you don't really have to do account management yeah. <laughs> it just organically yeah, happens I mean, it, it, <laughs> like, uh, she'll tell me all the time say hey uh me and the girls are gonna go out this night this night and 90 percent of those the, the women are clients yeah and I'm like, good. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, just don't exactly. do anything stupid. Have fun and just make sure everyone's good. So let's get into the, the name a yeah. little bit here. So yeah. it's, it's Navi, Navi, Navi title. Um, I was dying to kind of ask this why, why it was, and it was <laughs> basically what I thought it was. Yeah. But so, so explain to us why, where you came up with the name. So the, the biggest thing is when you're starting a new company, it's always, what the heck are you going to name it? Yeah. I sat there for probably over a month, writing name after name after name after name. And I wanted it to be a name that really wasn't a word. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, and everyone makes fun of me when I tell this story because it's, I, I, I was done thinking about it. I got in my car, which everyone, I, I drive a Tesla and everyone makes fun of me when I say that part. <laughs> Cause I, I mention it because there's a big screen in the middle. And in the upper left-hand corner is a big word that says navigate. Mm -hmm. And obviously you hit on the nose. I mean, it comes from navigate. And I saw that word and I was like, you know, I'm going to take half of it and navi and I'm going to navigate the way to home ownership. So yeah. that's I mean, how so, it came up. So did you ever think about hiring like a, a branding company or, did, or a marketing company to help no. you with this whole process? And you're just like, no, I'm just going to figure out a name and I'm going to roll from there. And Dude, it, it was one of those, I mean, they, they joke about, starting something from a garage. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I was working for a different corporation mm -hmm. and so I couldn't spend any time doing this, build it or nothing. So I hired two consultants that did it all. So besides the branding aspect of it, I mean, that was all me personally in my head, but I had two consultants build the whole thing from start to finish. And so when it was time to make the switch, it was already built the car the, here's the keys to the car. Mm -hmm. It's good to go. So they do this for the living just with title companies or just with companies? They do, they do it na nationwide. Oh, wow. Yeah. Damn. So that was <laughs> just like a pop-up shop. No. It, it, well, it, it, so thinking about it, I mean, all the, the legal aspects of starting a title company, I mean, you got to remember my background was sales. Yeah. So when it comes to actually starting a title company and what the title company actually does, yeah, I was still not 100% sure. Yeah. I, mean, I knew totally. how to bring business in. I knew what the numbers look like. But actually, what title was, I'm mm -hmm. still not 100% From start to certain. finish, yes, right? from start to finish. It's the same way with the mortgage business. 100%. Me too. It's like, I don't know. I don't go all the way into the funding side and docs closed. You know, docs going out and, it, yes. you know, it's like, they're like, oh, we have a shipping department. I was like, what? No, but it's, so <laughs> the, the people that I left, um, obviously they thought I would fail because they didn't, they knew I didn't know every aspect of a title and escrow company. Right. So, but it's always about who you know. Right. And so I made sure to hire people around me that knew every aspect of it. So accounting is a big piece. I mean, the reconciliation, the, the remittances, everything in regards to post close. I mean, there's so many small factors in an escrow company nobody thinks about, mm -hmm. but I hired the people to tell me what those were. Right. So let's talk about when you went to Linda and <laughs> said, Linda, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm think I'm gonna uh, do this, or I'm thinking about doing this. Well, it's, she's been doing this 43 years, right? So, and I, she's kind of a legend. She and she is a legend in the West Valley. Yeah, everyone knows Linda Banavac that's and been your around sister and oh. my sister Tanya. So the conversation was hard. I mean, Tanya was the number one escrow officer at Lawyers Title, right? Uh, I mean, she pumped out five million in revenue the last year she was there. And she did just a lot of business in general. And that, that conversation was quite interesting, actually. Um, so Linda wanted to retire. And the only way I can get her to retire was do something like this, to where I can remove her from the company she's at and put her in a role that where she would run a desk for a short period of time and then turn into escrow admin and just help out the staff down the road. Right. So cool. this was the only way it was going to happen. And obviously, I mean, compensate her along the way after she's away from the desk. Um, but they thought it was a joke for two, three months. And then I said, no, this is real. And I'm about to pull <laughs> the trigger. 
Wow. And, and Tanya was definitely on board. I mean, there was other factors involved from the prior company we were coming from. I mean, it was a corporation. So during COVID, I mean, all everyone reduced staff. Uh, FNF made us reduce 25% of staff without knowing what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we all know what happened last year in May, the real estate market just went crazy. Right. And we couldn't hire people back on. Right. And so I was sitting there watching just everybody work 12, 13, 16 hours a day, and we couldn't hire help. And that's one thing I wanted to control. Yeah. And the position I was in, I had zero control. Right. It, it, so control is that control is a big thing, dude. And I, I totally understand it. You want to have control from start to finish on some on stuff. And was that besides the fact you kind of want to do your own thing and there was the growth factor, but having control was probably one of the big things as well. I'm assuming hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. It was making decisions. I mean, obviously, I mean, being staffed correctly is important. I mean, watching the escrow staff work these hours and not having a life after work, it's it's sad. Oh, and dude, it's sad. And they're that's, they're notorious for that, they, right? They, they are, and some of it. No matter what it, company, it is, and some of it's self inflicted from the EO, and mm -hmm. they just don't want to go home. They want to grind, grind, right, grind. Right, right. But it's I want to still give them the option. Hey, if we need to hire an assistant two or three to get you home by six, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, my margins don't have to be. 30, 35% like they do at these large corporations, I can run on smaller margins. Totally. Real Talk is brought to you by escrow, the letter S, grow. Disorganization and constant communication are huge problems in the real estate journey. And it's an issue that I think most real estate agents, well, at least some real estate agents, uh, struggle with in their CRM systems. There's a lot of options out there and a lot of people have different ones. And when I'm speaking with the agents that are that we work with or that are our referral partners, the big hurdle is the actual creation of the templates and actually creating the, the automation that goes out for milestones. So escrow kind of takes all that away. So everything's pre-written for you. You have multiple choices to, to go from, um, to choose from, I'm sorry. So if you're looking for a CRM system that is super easy to use and will eliminate a lot of the confusion and the heavy lifting up front, go to escrow.com, S, the letter S, grow.com. So Trish, because I, I, th I think I have a, of the next direction I kind of want to go a little bit with this yeah. but before we do that why don't we hit him with a uh, little bit of rapid fire question here so we can break it up a little bit okay Ryan what was the last gift you gave someone <laughs> the last gift besides me calling my wife to do it all I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you gave her a gift yeah a that, job. <laughs> there you go I, that's right that's actually pretty good just kidding I mean, just no right. no <laughs> it, it, this is a this is a good question um and it kind of falls in line about how I care about my people. Um, I wanted to recruit somebody on board um, and they didn't have the funds to purchase a car. And that was hindering them from getting to the office. And so to answer your question, the last gift I got is I actually bought the gentleman a vehicle. I mean, it was a, wow. it was a small vehicle. I mean, it wasn't expensive, but it was still just gifting him a vehicle to get to work. And when I dropped it off at his house, um, he wasn't there, but his wife was. And when you see all that stuff on TV about when you give a family 10,000, 100,000, right. just the tears and joy. Yeah. I mean, this was a little $5,000 vehicle. Yeah. And she came outside just bawling. And the, the, the back up. Let's, I, I want to hear the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to see, did she know you were doing this? So she knew. So that okay. <clears throat> when I had, when I called them both up and said, Hey, and I had her on speaker with him mm -hmm. and I said, I, this is what I want to do for you guys. Uh, I know you guys don't have a vehicle and I know you take the bus to the office. I know you ride your bike. Um, I'm going to buy you guys a vehicle and the tears just over the phone. Mm -hmm. She was like, Oh my gosh, nobody has ever done this in our entire life. 
right. and just the, the joy and the excitement she had that someone actually cared. Um, and this is someone who's been in title and escrow forever and doesn't, it's not a big position. It's not revenue generating. It's just basically client service, mm-hmm. but I know he's good at what he does and I wanted him to come on board yeah. and he deserved it all these years of watching him take the bus. I wanted to give it to him. Dude. Wow. Okay. So you get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so he's not there. So I, I pull up and I actually had Chris Medina with me. Um, so I can, he can take me back in his truck and she walks out and she's walking out, just cry on her face. Like she won the lottery. Oh my and God. It, no, it that's, was, that's, it was the best. But I gave up, <laughs> I gave her a big hug. And I said, you know what? You guys are important to me. Yeah. And this means a lot to me to give this to you guys. Yeah. And talking to Medina after that, he's like, Ryan, I've witnessed a lot of things, but that right there is, yeah, was probably the best moment I've seen in a long time. I mean, I hate to move forward real quick, but I, you can ask one more question <laughs> because I, I want to talk about Medina. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your favorite word? My favorite word. Uh, that's a good fired question. Uh, collaboration. Ooh, that's really good. Uh, I, I'm real big on collaboration. When I, you know, when we talked about being in control, I still like to collaborate with the team and talk things through. Yeah. Because I don't know everything, and we never will. And it's always about collaborating with each other to find out the best result. It's being a good leader, I think. Right. Yeah. Being a good leader and like, you can't do everything by yourself. But it's navigating everybody else. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like it. In, into every discussion and making everybody yep. feel like they're part of the team and they, yeah. they are, right? Because uh-huh. it helps control. So, <clears throat> Medina. Yeah. So, another, I mean, that's another really cool story, too, right? So, you gave him an opportunity of a lifetime, too. I mean, you changed his life. I did. Dramatically, right? And it was, um, but there was a reason for that, right? So, mm-hmm. where did you meet him in the first, for the first <laughs> place? In the first place. So, uh, Tell Chris Medina is. It, now he's a dear friend and he's awesome at what he does in sales. Uh, but I met him, my wife and I would go to Arrowhead Grill all the time. And he was the bartender at Arrowhead Grill. And I needed an assistant at first when I was in sales. This was about eight, nine years ago. And obviously, I mean, having a man as my assistant wasn't, I mean, we, we don't multitask very well. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it, it's, but I, I watch him like know everybody's order that came in all the time. I would go in there, my drink would be on the table. He would have it just, he had everything just figured out at the bar. Yeah. And he was good with people. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I, I brought him on board. He had no idea the same way I was when I, came, when I came on of not knowing what the hell we did. Yeah. And well, this is 2013. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. he, I mean, dude, he's a, now he just, I mean, he, he dominates what he does for sure. He does. And so he now works at Navi as well. He does. He's is he business dir- development? What no, is he's so now director of sales. Yeah. So it, when he was at the previous company, he was our number one sales guy. I mean, the relationships he built, um, I mean, he's, he secured George Lawton and all them. So that was a big one for him. But just a lot of the big clients on the West side, I mean, he did everything kind of how I did it. Got just into their lives. Yeah. And he cares about people. And that's one thing. And he anybody, shows up. And he shows up. Yeah. Anybody that that's listening, the biggest thing is just care about who you're talking to. Genuinely. like Genuinely. Yeah. And he has a cool, he's not like a go out nope. in Scottsdale guy. Nah. <laughs> I mean, his, he lives, he's, he's West side guy that lives like, a simple but, life. So, so yeah. Just, but he's, but he lives it like, I mean, dude, I love with a purpose, dude. I love watching and Chris, you can listen to this one because dude, he's so close to his dad. Yes, dude. And, and his brother. Yep. And man, they're like best friends. And it's like, I, I get super envious. So when I see those like pictures of them at the son's game together and they're like, it's like two brothers, but they're really, it's father's son. It is. It is. You know, at all the yeah. Cardinals games and the son's games together and stuff. But that's like his genuine personality and just rock solid dude. And, and, and that's how he treats first. everybody else. Yeah. So that's a, that's really cool. <clears throat> so let's talk about what's been the most difficult part of this because it's not all sunshine and rainbows here. No, it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. No, it hasn't. I mean, just as we're growing, I mean, we launched in February, so we've been up and running almost five months. Uh, and I, I warned the wife that I won't be home 
Um, I'm not going to be around. Um, just time with my children and family. Mm-hmm. That one's been tough. Um, and more on the personal side, it, it's it's weird not being able to go up to the cabin or go play golf. Or di- there's zero free time. Yeah. I mean, where I came from, I had lots of free time. So, but there's a lot to get done. I mean, just learning every intricacy of the business. I mean, because the goal and just business in business of running a business, Correct. not just the title, but it's just running a business. Correct. And running and owning it, it's it. There's as we're growing, we're up to 20 employees right now. By the end of the year, um, uh, budgeting 50 employees. So it, it's one of those where now that it all relies on me. Mm-hmm. And the stress now of just all these families that I'm helping support, it's it's mentally, it, it drives oh, on. It. it does. Do you look at the piano every day? I, I'm I'm weird with numbers. I look at it almost every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know where we're at. I know on the expense side. I know everything that's coming in, and we're good. I mean, we're our margins are excellent right now yeah. after four months. And but the hardest piece is going to be when it comes to audits. Um, I'm actually looking forward to the audits because right now when you're starting off new, like I met with one of the escrow officers today and kind of just on transition on what our new role is going to be. And her asking me how she can improve on the escrow side when it retains, when it pertains to files. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? That's why I want an audit. So I know internally of what we're not doing. So who's going to do the audit? It's third party. It is. Okay. They come in, they just do a third party audit for all your, to see if you guys, where the numbers are at. No, not not, not financial. Or it's just compliance. Compliance. Mm. So that's like, who regulates that? The Department of Insurance. Okay. So so what about from, uh, I guess, I mean, everything lines up when you guys know that when you're when you're actually doing the escrow officer finalized. Yeah, process. and it's, it's <clears throat> the, the way I'm doing this, I'm not just bringing on just escrow officers, anybody. I mean, I, right. I, yeah, I yeah. want people that have been around, that are seasoned, yeah. that know what they're doing. So what's your pitch to them then? So like, like, how can you get somebody that's coming over from, that's making, you know, good money from a big company and you're like, Hey, come on over here. I got a little office around the corner. No, a a lot of it has been the small business aspect, um, and the startup piece. They, they want to be a part of something that's new Yeah. and they like the excitement. They like what they see out there on the sales side. I mean, what we're developing to bring in more business just with Lance, Lance is my director of agent development. And we're building a whole training platform that'll probably be integrated with my, it, I'm shooting for the board. Mm-hmm. So the whole board might use our training platform. That's branded Navi for every realtor. So we're going to, is that where you guys are in Vegas doing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's the, the platform is a one-stop shop to help teams onboard their agents and also for just individual agents on coaching what the best tactics are, where to get leads, just your everyday coach, if they can't afford one, yeah, we have one on board on staff. So driving new business in is not gonna be the, the issue. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing that people are coming on is, it's family, man. It's yeah. one of those where I wanna treat everybody there as family. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those where instead of us always giving back to our customers, well, my customers are my employees. Totally. And always giving back to them. Is it there? You got to make the work environment a, a good one. I fully agree. I mean, we, we actually just talked to a person today, and there's one thing that we're, that's missing, I think, in this, in the mortgage industry, is onboarding with new LOs and the training side of it all. Because it's, if you're a good LO, you're usually don't have time to yep. train somebody yep. new. And the average age age of an LO is 57, right? So you got somebody who's 25 wants to come in the business, they have to go through a Zenix program if they want to do that. But there's, it's not like there's a staff of people that are going to because it takes. First of all, you need at bats to do it, like yep. right. You can't. Yep. And yep. and you and I are never in. We're not in the weeds. So somebody comes on, they want to learn the mortgage side of actually doing the loans. They've got to go sit with somebody that sits at the desk basically all day long, and yep. that's what they do. You got to mirror them. I mean, and it's, so it's a tough program because they have to be willing to do that as well. Yep. 
And so that's cool that you guys are, that we, we need that on this side of the business as well, for sure. Um, it, it's, it's cool because you look at it, it's going to be called uh, <clears throat> Navi Gateway. Mm-hmm. And it's, so say, Ryan, you're a big team. And a big team, I'll just say 10, 12 agents. I mean, it's a decent sized team. When you onboard new agents, a lot of these smaller mid teams don't have an onboarding process like you just said. Well, boom, I'm gonna white label this whole platform for you. Mm -hmm. And all the onboarding, every step, every training, when it comes to contracts, whatever it is, it's all on there and you can keep track of it. Oh, so this is not for the title people coming up. This is no. for real estate. Real estate. Real, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I misread. Okay. Yes. So you would think that they have, so it's just a little more intricate than the average one is now because if you go to, say you go, say you go to my home group, there's a whole process that they go through, right? There is. Okay. For, as the brokerage. Right. But say you join a team that's at my home group gotcha. that's got five, six, seven agents. Uh, mm-hmm. that they're just going to be, well, we're a team, you know, right. come join us, have fun. We'll give you some leads. Right. Well, there's no, I mean, one that's out there that's really good at onboarding is Julie Calza. I mean, she's got a whole onboarding process that's pretty killer. Um, but not a lot of people do. Right. And so now if we can just white label it to them and they can utilize everything on there when it comes to, you know, the first 30 days, you're going to go on X amount of listing presentations with so-and-so that it's all in there. Right. And then keep track of it all. That's nice, dude. You know so, who does that really well is the brokery. The brokery does, yeah. Yes, yeah. they do. They are good. They do. Um, so you're can so you're you're growing so your day to day activity right now is basically talking to people to coming on board, right? So you are you trying to like interview, we're trying to recruit. Every day. Every day. That's what you're doing every, every day. day. Every day. It's right now is locating space around the valley. Um, I mean we do have people that we are talking to in every aspects of the valley Mm -hmm. but right now it's just it's crazy how there's not a lot of commercial space dude isn't that weird you would think (laughs) there you would think there was but and even the ones that do have it it's expensive it is yeah i mean i'm seeing stuff for 35 40 dollars a foot yeah it's crazy and you rented a little space off of the like the 101 right so we actually bought the building we're in on 51st avenue in the 101. yeah he's like so close to mom and dad's house like oh so you're right right north street. of the 101 yep. oh on the right hand side 51st the west side? avenue no so 51st ave and the 101 north of the freeway on the east side north of the freeway on the east side yeah There's a commercial there it's not it hasn't been there very long what's that thing behind it <laughs> That's like a that's temple my, that's my mosque. Temple. Okay. Yeah. And then there's like a weird little apartment complex of some sort, like right. Yeah, that like 12 plex thing or whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Yeah. Super random. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize there was an office complex. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what, okay. What's so you inter- bought that building. We huh? bought that building. And what's interesting is, I mean, we did it during COVID. Mm-hmm. And so we didn't expect a lot of signings in the office. I mean, it's 3,400 square feet, but I have it jam packed right now with people. But so we thought we'd be doing mobile notaries left and right. Yeah. Well, everybody that comes in says, you know, we'll just come to the office. It's easy. It's convenient. It's right off the freeway. We'll sign. I'm like, well, I didn't expect that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like somebody. Okay. Go sit with her. Yeah. So, I'm, so o'clock. right now, now I'm paying for a lot of notaries out of pocket just because. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to expand? Is there any room for expansion at that office? Uh, no, not that. Okay. Office. So it's just 30. That's the whole thing. You're full. To, you're full. Yeah. Okay. We got, we got 20 people in there. So you're trying to go in like you're trying to go to like Goodyear, Gilbert, Chandler, Tempe, every or every what? aspect, yeah. every aspect. How many offices are you trying to get to? Six. Okay. Six. Well, damn, dude, you're busy. Because <laughs> then you got to do all the leases if you yes. don't buy the building, and then that's the problem. So we'd rather buy every building we go into, but there's mm-hmm. nothing that fits our criteria, so we end up leasing. Well, it's nice that you have the opportunity to buy in every building that you go into. <laughs> so I guess things are working out. No, it's yeah, it it's. Do more you have investors in those in in the, on the buildings, or is it just like your partners in this business? Just partners. Okay. Yeah. So you never go ahead. Hey, cool idea. <laughs> is, yeah, we, is, we we exhaust every SBA loan we can. Yeah, so I was gonna say, but uh, one of the cool things I think that the brokery does that that I, that they give their people that work for them the opportunity to be partners in the building I so, like that. so they're like hey we're gonna we want to open up a shop on central hmm. if you want to be a part of it you can invest in the building and they pay basically their investment is the down payment and tucker and oleg take the uh 
they take the loan underneath them. I like that. So that gives everybody opportunity. Nobody, they don't have to come with any money. And now huh. they're an investor in a commercial, bit, of course, from commercial space. So sorry, broker, I may steal that. You shouldn't steal that. that it's, yeah, it's a great model. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, They'll tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey. dude. I mean, we're set, we're saying this. I mean, they're all about it. It's about all, everybody doing it that way. Just it's such rip a good, off and repeat. It's a, such a good idea. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man, dude. I think it's, it's, you know, I, I'm envious that you're, that you've that took the leap and you, you did it. And, and a lot of people talk about it, but they don't, they don't do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, go back to those struggles. I mean, that, that last question you ask, I mean, it's, I, I, I'm up every night trying to figure out the next best thing. Yeah. And when it comes to the whole process itself on buying a home, it, it's antiquated when it comes to title and escrow. I mean, you think about the whole process. I mean, all, the, all the, the papers going back and forth and this and that, and it's just, there's no smooth process. Uh, so the goal, once I get launched, it'll be about mid 2022 to where I should have the six locations up and going. That's where my time is being focused is on. Trying to figure out a better way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask a quick question. question. Yeah. So when you are trying to get the business from a brokerage, from a real estate brokerage, Mm -hmm. what's your pitch? I mean, obviously the friendships and, you know, all of the relationship building has been huge for you, but how, when somebody says, well, why would we give your business or give you our business as opposed to lawyers or fidelity or grand Canyon? So this is, a, this is a good question. And this was another reason why I started my own thing is with the way real estate's changing, there's the, the agents are seeing a commission compression. Mm-hmm. So they're being coached, trained for ancillary incomes. I mean, you get hit up all the time, I'm sure. And we're at F and F, they don't have the joint venture possibility. And so we kept losing big teams to joint ventures on the title side. And so that was another reason why I want to go on my own is to still be in the fight and kind of invest in the real estate's business as well. I mean, obviously RESPA compliant with JVs, but it's that's to answer a little bit of that question. But the other one is uh, Lance, Lance Billingsley, director of agent development. He ran large teams at Realty One. He was a team lead at the Lawton team. And I had him come on board uh, in February to be our agent development. So he is actually coaching and training agents on how to do more business. So he was a Tom Ferry coach, all that. Sneaky. <laughs> That's sneaky. Yeah. And George Lawton was on board with that. <laughs> yes. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was. No, it, it's cool because like uh we met with a gentleman last week who's taking about thirty listings a week. Holy and cow. Who yeah. the hell is that? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. George Lawton? No, no, it wasn't George. It's a hundred a week. No, you need yeah. to share that with us. <laughs> <laughs> we need to listings that don't person. do you guys any good. Come on. That's uh, true. But there's yeah, cross yep. sales and Yeah, it's true. But he's in the Southeast Valley. And so he's starting to grow his team and he's, he's a hell of a worker. He grinds, he works hard every day. And so what we had Lance do with him last week was sit down and put processes in place on how to scale, how to recruit, who to recruit, and kind of just his whole booklet of, you know, working hard is great, but Mm -hmm. you have to have processes in place. And so now Lance is embedded with him and his team to build all of that. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's such a that's such a smart, smart idea. Yeah. You knew that. <laughs> I mean, it can do that. You can implement that in every single. You can like, in, in, in our industry. side of business as well. But it's, my wheels are spinning a little bit. Uh, so, what about? Have you guys thought about doing JVs with more on the mortgage side as well? It, I'm open to it. Yeah, I'm open because I know it. that a lot of them are a lot of. I mean, I almost feel like right now, like the JV side of things is it's if you want good people, I don't care if it's on the title side or the mortgage side, you have to provide some sort of something different. You do. And people want ownership. People want, you know, if you want to they bring do. over a big person that's doing huge money, you got to pay him a ton. Rest by compliant. I mean, not for, for us. We can, you can recruit somebody over to a mortgage company. Yeah. And true. pay him. True. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying going after a realtor. Yes. But yeah, I mean, you, you bring them in, but it's, it's amazing the amount of money that's being thrown around right now to bring in like super top LOs to switch companies. You were telling me a story. That's yeah, insane. It's insane. And, and 
I mean, they're a huge producer, but why would somebody that's making, you know, a couple million dollars, if not more, a year, mm -hmm. they've got, a, they've obviously got good systems running as it is because they wouldn't be that, success, that successful if they didn't. Yep. So what's the appeal, right? It's, it's, it's to go have their own thing. Yes. Or be a part of something, right? So either give them ownership in the company or create a JV or do something like that. So you just have to get creative today. You have to for, for any of like, I mean, like it or not, EXP is pulling people. It is. They, they are. And uh -huh. they're, they're growing crazy. But like a lot of people don't want to accept the fact that this is happening. <laughs> but it's happening. And it's happened a and lot the past year. Yeah. And yeah. they're bringing some good people over there with, with the idea that they're going to grow this business. And they're going to have people under them. But that's the sell for them, right? Is the stock and, and, and the opportunity. They're going to make money on people that come. But it's all recruiting too, yep. right? Yep. So the guys at the top of EXP are just, I mean, they're just... They're loving it. They're loving it. <laughs> but that's the, that's, that's the way it goes. But you have all these boutique, boutique brokers and stuff like the brokery um, and Launch and Retsy and all these stuff that are still dominating their markets because they bring a special... Well, they're hyper-focused. They're hyper-focused, they're hyper yeah. hyper-local. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it, it's one of those, I mean, the hyper-local, yes. Um, it, it, you bring up the question, I mean, being creative. Yeah. I mean, you have to be creative. I mean, it's thinking outside the box of just, uh, sorry, Valentine, that might've been a plug for you. I don't know, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, um, but it's one of those where it's the, the donut dolly of title and escrow, of uh, the free marketing, the free printing, the free, this, it may get you an agent that does one deal a year. Yeah. But to play with the big boys, I mean, you have to be one involved in those mm -hmm. big boys circles and lives mm -hmm. and know what they want. Yep. And it's, it's money. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's True. Money. And ownership. Ownership is huge. Yeah. So they, how, how does a joint venture come to be? Uh, good question. It's, it's one of those where it's a title only JV. So Navi title owns majority of it. The agents own a minority of it and the title revenue is shared between the owners. So you guys just approach brokerages that you would want to partner with? Yeah, and there's actually a performa. I mean, they got to do X amount of deals to make it make sense. I mean, because RESPA compliant, they have to have their own title officer, they have to have their own office space, their own systems, yep. their own software. I mean, it's its own entity. So in order for it to make sense, I mean, they have to be doing at least 25, 30 closings a month. So we, we were approached year and a half ago and we're at that point we were like 85 percent purchase right and so we're like yeah it doesn't we were like well, it doesn't it doesn't make no. sense for you to want to do this with us and no. then it was like three of our branches yeah well lo and behold right market turns and we're doing so much business and the refi boom happened if we if we would have done that I mean, talk. It would have been astronomical the amount yeah. of money that we blew it basically on that on that aspect. But it didn't make sense. We weren't providing it. We can't direct purchase purchases. No. So it's like, what's the what was the purpose of it? So it's really really advantageous for the realtors to be t to to be in with with the title company more than it is for a title company being in with the mortgage company. Well, it but, is. I mean, on a refi, your average fee per file is a fourth of what it is on a purchase. Right. Which is like three hundred bucks, right? Something like, <laughs> something like that, right? Like, it's pretty reason. low. It's yeah. pretty low. Yeah. So we're I mean, looking at eight nine hundred, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the for the company, right? Yeah. Is it that much on a refi? God, I thought it was less than that. No, our average fee per file right now is as a whole is over thirty five hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Wow. All right, Trish, you had another question, or that was it? Yeah, I can pull one out here. Are you gonna fire something at me? Yeah. Um, high school, awesome or terrible? Terrible. Terrible. Uh, the school was good. Uh, experience was terrible. I mean, like I said at the beginning, I mean, I was just one of the quiet, shy kids just getting through school. Why'd you go to St. Mary's, by the way? Were you living down in that area? So, no. I, okay. I was supposed to go to Chaparral. Okay. And so I, I lived on 40th Street in Choya, and my dad wanted me to play baseball. And so when I went, I mean, I, I graduated high school at 5'8". Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, I'm 6'2 now, so I was always a little guy out there. Mm -hmm. Um I didn't make the baseball team in St. Mary's, but I went there for baseball, for baseball. Wow. And so I dropped baseball and went to golf. Were you playing golf before that? No. <laughs> you just picked up golf and you got that good wow. that quick and went to college? <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's freaking nuts. Yeah, wow. it was, I mean, 
before high school, I would shoot like 90 or 100. Yeah. But then four years of hardcore work, right. you'll yeah. get there. Yeah. You'll get yeah. there. <laughs> I've been there before. Not that. <laughs> I'm not there anymore. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Ryan and I grew up doing um, a lot of Friday nights at St. Mary's football games. Yeah. Like it was a big part of our I childhood. Never went. I never went. Well, dude, when you were in high school, it wasn't that cool. But when we were, because that was 10 years after me. And when we, it, it kind of went in a different direction. But when we were kids, though, my, I mean, they were like powerhouse. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, St. Mary's had a 5A, just powerhouse football team. Yeah, they were. I mean, it was still great. there when I was there. I mean, Sanson, I mean, Sanson would play, he went, played Notre Dame um, as a kicker. I mean, it's, but still, he made it. Still, a, still an athlete. He's still, okay. <laughs> Kickers yeah. are important and sort of punters. Hey, <laughs> if anyone's raising a boy, have them be a, a punter. Yeah. yeah. Dude, well, Jay Ray that, that works here with us, his son's going to just, just moved into his dorms at CSU for punter. Yeah. He was like the number two punter in the country. Get and after he, it. But he's an incredible athlete as well. But get after it. Yeah. Make a million dollars a year kicking a football. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. To wrap it up, uh, I don't think we have any more rapid fire questions for you, but okay. I just... I think, dude, I'm, I'm I'm super happy for you, dude. I don't want to say because I'm that old, but I'm proud of you, proud of you too, dude, for for taking the leap and doing this stuff. I, I know you guys hustled so, and I know you guys left a lot on the table, a lot. But there's a there's the upside's incredible, and uh, it is. Yeah. It's and we get to do it together. Totally. Uh -huh. Have you got your boys and your girls? <laughs> well, you know, with you over there doing something super, super cool. You know, your wife's super proud of you, and and, and your kids, I'm sure, think you're the coolest guy on earth right now. Well, they will eventually when they're working there. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, hopefully not. But right I get now. it, dude. Family, is, you know, doing it for the right reasons. But, dude, from an economical standpoint, it's going to make a lot of sense as well. Well, it, it will down the road. I mean, yeah. to to answer that question earlier too about what what do I, how do I recruit? What do I tell them? Uh, I mean, it's funny because when I have them talk to staff that's already there. I mean, you literally are doing the same job at X company as you are mine. Yeah. But the, the perks of what I'm doing for the employees and how I can give back to them, just, I mean, the basic stuff on the 401k, the health benefits. I mean, I pay all my benefits for the employees. And so, I mean, having free health care there too is... I was going to ask you a question, but I literally thought that was going to be too boring. <laughs> I, I swear, I, got, I was going to ask yeah. this question. I was like, why are you going to do it? Like, that's got to be crazy because that's expensive. It, to, the healthcare is expensive. 401 k setting up for a small business like yours. Dude, that's pretty impressive because, you know, dude, sometimes when people were coming here, it's part of the package. Like, we, they, we have to, like, figure out how to cover there because it's so expensive because yeah. the healthcare, dude, it ain't cheap nowadays. So that's, that's a good, that's a huge perk for somebody. It is, and they, they were thankful. I mean, paying for Cobra for all the employees for it's four months was yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's, I mean, it was $3,000 a month just for my family through Cobra. That was fun. Yeah, that's that's fun. <laughs> well, I think that like, bringing people in for the right reasons and having the whole family aspect and them being, especially the ones that, you got, that are in now, being at the beginning, I'm sure Chris is like ecstatic. And, yes. and yeah, yeah, your mom and your sister, they're still, I'm sorry, Linda and Amanda, or not <laughs> no, Amanda, Tanya. Tanya, Tanya. Yes. Amanda's his wife. Uh, they're, they're, they're good. They are, they are. It, it's, we're going to be transitioning Linda soon to retire. So cool. that we're going to throw a huge party like she deserves and it doesn't matter the expense. She deserves it 43 years. Oh yeah. Holy I mean, I wouldn't be here without her. So I mean, in this and she's business. she's a sweetheart too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey so. Ryan, can you flash your shirt? No. It's oh, all yeah, it's all hidden by your. I know, but I wasn't being like uh, just down here. With that's a that's a sweet logo. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, it's clean. Very looks yeah. very good. Yeah, for, love it. So it's one of those where for I, made up word. For what? Made, for made up, up word. word. Absolutely, yeah. man. There you that, go. I wanted a logo on there that I can put just without the words. Totally. Right, it's a symbol. Just yeah. throw it on. It's all about the swag. It is. You know what? Because there isn't that many good ones. There isn't. And it, it's like the swag. Yeah. So. The, the dress code where we're at. <laughs> okay. So as long as I, I give them as many free Navy title gear as they want. <laughs> yeah. And so they can wear jeans every day as long as they got a Navy title shirt on. No, I don't care. So I think I'm, every day, like I walked in the office today, I would say 80% of the staff had on na Navy title gear. It's that, that exact shirt or is there multiple different ones? <laughs> multiple different ones. Okay. Yeah. Different styles or just different colors? Both. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's good. No, it's cool that they're they're proud and yeah. happy too. Dude, I mean, yeah, it's super exciting. Um, well, 
you, you, he's hiring everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yes. You want to be in that sort of culture. It sounds pretty fun. Yeah. I might get in a title. <laughs> Just kidding. You won't. No, you're not. No, no way. Um, <clears throat> but awesome, dude. Navi title. Ryan Banovac. Appreciate you coming in. This was in. fun, man. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, man. It's fun when we have people in here that we we're friends with it makes it easy to have a good conversation Simple. sometimes sometimes they're like well you know you guys just go off on a rant but now you stayed tight we tried. Good. focused we're on this yeah, yeah no it was good um first thanks vip for allowing us to have us uh, have this in this awesome space um i like it i like this thank space you. You, thank did good. You. you did good karen bailey for the sweet uh glass Whatever whiteboard yeah, yeah. The, the whiteboard but she did well it's a glass board but glass board, it's a glass board. whiteboard there you yeah. go all right so thanks for being technical about that hey so, uh thank you trey for being here to help us uh, make Always. this look good appreciate it and trisha my producer the one and, and only sister producer <laughs> such an ass <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but she, this this does function because of her uh, diligence of basically keeping me keeping me on on task. Yeah. We have to actually getting them scheduled and getting the information about the people we, that I don't know. It sometimes is way more difficult than than this which is. Yeah, but uh, obviously I had to cancel a couple times too. So thank. Well, you. that was my fault. <laughs> Shh, I didn't tell her that. <laughs> well, I never gave him the time. Like yeah. I thought I did, and I was just like, "Hey, cool man, we'll be there at two And he's like, "What?" You never gave me the time, and I was like, "Well, you never asked." <laughs> Why is this? I told you, hey, Ryan, the, I'm the guest. the whole I'm day, the, dude. I'm the guest. Come on, give yeah. me the whole details. That's <laughs> when I saw that uh, message back and forth. I was like, "Okay, I need to send him a calendar invite." Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, again, so thank you, everybody. We need everybody to go onto our YouTube page, Real Talk with Ryan Madrid. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notifications. I love it. Like that. Good job. Go to our Instagram, Real Talk with Ryan Madrid, Facebook. And you can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts. Is it, can I say that that way? Uh, yeah, I think Apple so. Podcasts, Google, okay. Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Spotify. Yeah, it's all the same. Because some people, when I said Apple Podcasts, they're like, you mean podcasts? Because it's just, just, I'm like, it's, it's, it's an Apple, Apple product. It's Apple it's Podcasts. Apple right. podcast. No, it's, it's identified as Apple Podcasts. Okay, well, yeah. just, Google, just Google Ryan Madrid insecure, and it'll right. pop up. Oh, yeah, and guess what? We're also on LinkedIn now, too. So, Good. So you can see the episodes, listen to the episodes. We're finding that a lot of people are just listening to them, which is fine. But uh, in order for us to gain some traction, we need people to go on to all our social media and onto YouTube and just help us and support us, share everything you can, get people to, to at least uh, engage because they're good, man. Absolutely. There's a lot they of really are. good episodes. And, and every time I talk to people I, in, the, in, in Sedona this weekend, a lot of people came up to me and they said, yeah, I listened to part of this one or I listened to part of that one. That's fine. That's all they're going to do is right? part of it. Right. And, but there's, there's some really good, like people want to listen to their friends that, that are being interviewed. Yep. And uh, so help us out so we can maintain pain tray <laughs> in this building. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks again. Watch the, watch this one, please. It's a good one. I right, I appreciate it, Madrid. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Good Bye. night and goodbye. VIP Mortgage Incorporated does business in accordance with the federal fair lending laws, NMLS ID 145502. For state-specific licensing, please visit www.vipmtginc.com forward slash national hyphen licenses forward slash. VIP is not acting on behalf of or at the direction of the FHA, HUD, or the federal government. VIP is an equal housing lender.